Good morning, everyone. I hope you are fine. In our lecture today, we will discuss themes, motives, and symbols in Dr. Faustus, a tragedy by Christopher Marlowe. This lecture of the tragical history of Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe will include themes like power as corrupting influence and the divided nature of man. Also, it will include motives like magic and the supernatural and practical jokes. In addition to symbols like blood and the good and evil angels. Now moving on to discuss the main themes in Dr. Faustus. However, at first we should know what are themes. Actually, themes are the fundamental and often universal ideas explored in a literary work. So, the most common understanding of theme is an idea or point that is central to a story, which can often be summed in a single word, for example, love, death, betrayal. And typical examples of themes of this type are conflict between the individual and society. Coming of age, humans in conflict with technology. Nostalgia and the dangers of unchecked ambition. A theme also may be exemplified by the actions, utterances, or thoughts of a character in a novel or a play. An example of this would be the thematic idea of loneliness. In John Stenbeck's Of Mice and Men, wherein many of the characters seem to be lonely. It may differ from the thesis, the text, or author's implied word of view. On the other hand, a story may have several themes. For example, here in Dr. Faustus, we will discuss two themes. The first one is power as a corrupting influence. Number two, the divided nature of man. So now I will start with the first main theme in Dr. Faustus, which is power as a corrupting influence. Actually, in this theme, we have three important points. The first point, before the pact with Lucifer. So early in the play, before he agrees to the pact with Lucifer, Faustus is full of ideas for how to use the power that he seeks. He imagines, he imagines buying up great wealth, but he also aspires to plumb the mysteries of the universe and to remake the map of Europe, though they may not be entirely admirable. These plans are ambitious and inspire oh, if not sympathy. They lend a grandeur to Faustus' scheme and make his quest for personal power seem almost heroic, a sense that is reinforced by the eloquence of his early soliloquies. Moving on to the second point, which is after the pact with Lucifer. However, once Faustus actually gains the practically limitless power, that he so desires, his horizons seem to narrow. 
everything is possible to him. But his ambition is somehow sad. And instead of the grand designs that he contemplates early on, he contents himself with performing conjuring tricks for kings and noblemen. And takes a strange delight in using his magic to play practical jokes on simple folks. It is not that power has corrupted Faustus by making him evil indeed. Faustus's behavior after he sells his soul hardly rises to the level of a true wickedness. Rather, gaining absolute power corrupts Faustus by making him mediocre and by transforming his boundless ambition into a meaningless delight and very celebrating. The last important point is Christian framework of the play. So, in the Christian framework of the play, one can argue that True greatness can be achieved only with God's blessing. By cutting himself off from the creator of the universe, Faustus is condemned to mediocrity. He has gained the whole world, but he does not know what to do with it. On the other hand, the second Main theme in Dr. Faustus is the divided nature of man, which is actually represented by the good angel and the evil angel. So, Faustus is constantly undecided about whether he could repent and return to God or continue to follow his pact with Lucifer. His internal struggle goes on throughout the play. As part of him, I want to do good and serve God. But part of him, which is the dominant part, it seems, lusts after the power that Mephistopheles promises. The good angel and the evil angel both of whom appear at Faustus's shoulder in order to urge him in different directions, symbolize the citricle. While these angels may be intended as an actual pair of supernatural beings, they clearly represent Faustus's divided will, which compels Faustus to commit to Mephistopheles, but also to question this commitment continually okay now after discussing two main themes in Dr. Faustus I will move on to motives what are the main motives in Dr. Faustus well before knowing the main motives in Dr. Faustus we should know what are motives? Actually, motives are recurring structures, contrasts, or literary devices that can help to develop and inform the text's major themes. So, a motive is a recurring narrative element with symbolic significance. If you spot a symbol, concept, or plus structure that surfaces repeatedly in the text, you are probably dealing with a motive. They must be related to the central idea of the work, and they always end up reinforcing the author's overall message. Now, regarding to the main motives in Dr. Faustus, actually we have two ones. The first one is magic and the supernatural. As a matter of fact, the supernatural pervades Dr. Faustus. 
appearing everywhere in the story. So, angels and devils put it about. Magical spells are cast. Dragons, bow, chariots. Albert of stage, and even fools like the two hustlers, Robin and Ralph, can learn enough magic to summon demons. Still, it is worth noting that nothing terribly significant is accomplished through magic. Faustus. Play tricks on people, conjures up grapes, and explores the cosmos on a dragon. But he does not fundamentally reshape the world. So the magic power that Mephistopheles grants him is more like a toy than an awesome, earth-shaking ability. Furthermore. The real drama of the play, despite all the supernatural frills and pyrotechnic, takes place within Faustus's vacillating mind and soul, as he first sells his soul to Lucifer and then considers repenting. In this sense, the magic is almost incidental to the real story of Faustus's struggle with himself, which Marlowe intended not as a fantastical battle, but rather as a realistic portrait of a human being, with a world divided between good and evil. In addition to magic and the supernatural, we have another important motive in Dr. Faustus, which is practical jokes. So, once Faustus gains his awesome powers, he does not use them to do great deeds. And instead, he delights in playing tricks on people. For example, he makes horns sprout from the knight's head and sells the horse courser and enchanted horse. Actually, such magical practical jacks seem to be Faustus's chief amusement, and Marlowe uses them to illustrate Faustus's decline from a great brightful scholar into a bored, mediocre magician with no higher ambition than to have a laugh at the expense of collection of subletons. Okay. After discussing two important themes and two important motives in Dr. Faustus, now I will discuss two important symbols in Dr. Faustus. So, what are symbols? Actually, symbols are objects, characters, figures, or colors used to represent abstract ideas or concepts. For example, a flag is a symbol, stands for a country. So, a symbol is literary device that contains several layers of meaning, often concealed at first sight, and is representative of several other aspects, concepts, or traits than those that are visible in the literal translation alone. 
symbol is using an object or action that means something more than its literal meaning. For example, the phrase a new dawn does not talk only about the actual beginning of a new day, but also signifies a new start, a fresh chance to begin and to end of a previous tiring time. So now what are the main symbols in Dr. Faustus? Now, regarding to the main symbols in Dr. Faustus, actually we have two important ones. The first one is a plug. And in Dr. Faustus, plug plays multiple symbolic roles. So when Faustus signs away his soul, he signs in a plug, symbolizing the permanent and supernatural nature of this pact. His blood congeals on the page, however, symbolizing perhaps his own body's revolt against what he intends to do. As we have previously said, his blood congeal symbolizes his body's revolt, that is to say, his body does not want to be damaged, does not want to be sold to hell. Meanwhile, Christ's blood, which Faustus says he sees running across the sky, during his terrible last night, symbolizes the sacrifice that Jesus, according to Christian belief, made on the cross. The sacrifice, however, opened the way for humankind to repent his sins and be saved. Faustus, of course, in his proud folly, fails to take this path to salvation. So, as you have seen, in Dr. Faustus, blood symbolizes three important points. The first one, it symbolizes a permanent deal, represented by his signature by using his blood. The second point, is but these revolts symbolized by blood congeals. The third point is sacrifice symbolized by or represented by Christ's blood. On the other side the second important symbol in Dr. Faustus is the good and evil angels. So the angels appear at Faustus' shoulder early on in the play. While the good angel, urging him to repent and serve God, the evil angel urging him to follow his lust for power and serve Lucifer. Actually, the two symbolize his divided will, part of which wants to do good and part of which is sunk in sin. That was the end of our lecture today. For further reading, please refer to these references. Next lecture.
we will have a revision. Thank you very much for your time and good luck.